G'day, fellas, and welcome to something a little bit different. We're not doing a cast ad game today. Instead, what we're going to be doing is doing a game analysis of a recent tournament game where the Byzantines was picked. And this was an important match in the tournament, the grand finals, not grand finals, but the finals of EGC TV's The Finals for 2023. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you can go watch that live this weekend. Make sure you go check it out. 3DB picked the Byzantines against Vortex in the second game. And we're going to dive into it and take a look exactly what happens. We're going to break it down and we're going to get to the bottom of it because I tell you what, I'm excited. I'm incredibly excited. We actually get to see the Byzantines picked here in a game. So let's dive into it. What we're going to do is we're actually just going to watch from his perspective. We're going to get all this information out off the screen and try and talk about some of the decisions he's making. So the first thing we'll notice is he's going straight out over onto the berries. Now, normally I wouldn't advise this because the berries are a slower gather rate than the sheep and they're not the most efficient source of food in the early game, especially after you get through these first two berry patches because you've got quite a bit of a walk distance here. But there's a very special reason why he wants to do that. We're going to get into it a little bit later. He throws down the cistern and puts a mining camp on the stone, but I think he makes a bit of a mistake because he does cancel it and then ends up putting it over on the gold. Now, I have seen this game before, so I do know who wins. I'm not going to spoil it for you. You have to watch until the end to see how it goes. But you can see we do have that mining camp coming down, a villager moving out over here, and he's just going to be going with a one cistern opening. Now, this is despite the fact that the Byzantines have been buffed recently, that they have got that extra 50 stone at the start, where technically you do have a, a bit of an option. One of the things that he could have done that he didn't do, he could have brought five villagers out, gathered 50 stone here, and then made the mill. And you can actually hand the stone in at the mill. And then that way you can actually sneakily get your 50 stone without ever building that mining camp. It's, it's one of those cheeky little ways that you can abuse the game. Not really abusing it, but kind of exploiting it. So he's got the seven villagers on the berries at the moment and two villagers on the gold. And now he's going to start rallying to sheep. So we can see that he's got the two villagers here on the sheep now. Uh, and... Did I say seven? Six villagers on the sheep. Uh, and Oh, sorry. Six villagers on the berries. Now, now, this is largely because he has a goal. And that goal, it is to get mercenaries. He wants to get mercenaries early. And there's a very spe specific reason why that is. And that's because Vortex is playing the English. Now, naturally, when we think about our mercenaries, we normally think towards those longbows. The longbows are really great. Very versatile units. Keshiks are also pretty good if you go for the Hippodrome. But longbows are your staple. In this match, that's not going to happen. B knows that his opponent is playing English. Naturally, the English love to make their longbows. So what other options do you have? Well, you've got the Silk Road Mercenary Contract, which gives you access to javelin throwers. And one of the ways he's going to be utilizing the Byzantines here is by getting those javelin throwers out really early on in the game. And that's important because one of the issues that you have often with javelin throwers is that longbow number starts to build up. And once it gets to around 20, 25 longbows, you're going to have trouble because those longbows are very good at just picking them off. They two-shot them eventually, and then it is just, it, it's all downhill from there. So the sooner you get them out, the sooner you can actually start denying those longbows, start ruining that uh, that early mass. And we do now start to see the age up coming through. 2 minutes 38, Imperial Hippodrome thrown down, still working on the berries over towards this side. Now you can see that loss of efficiency coming through. One of the things I often talk about on my Patreon, which uh, link in the description, plenty of coaching content out over there, is if you are going to be looking to go for this early mill, don't prioritize putting it close to the town center. Instead, prioritize putting it close to the berries. Because often when you get a spawn, there'll be three berry patches that are on the opposite side, but they're all, they all have an adjacency to a potential mill in there. And you, that's what you want to fight for. You want to fight for that adjacency. You don't want to have this long distance gathering. So we'll check in with him, see how he's doing on the scouting. For the most part, has forgotten about the enemy. Doesn't look to see what the enemy's up to at this stage of the game. His opponent is either going to be on stone if they're going for a second TC, or pretty heavy on gold if they're going for a castle age, or if they're just playing standard, you can expect to see probably no, no villagers on gold and uh, the council hall very close to that gold vein because they're probably going to be moving back to it. And up against Vortex, it's important to remember uh -huh. he's playing up against an aggressive player. If I, if I came across Vortex... On the, on the ladder, I would not be expecting a second town center out of Vortex. I would expect big aggression. You know, whenever I go in and look through Vortex's history to cast a game of his, every single game is between like 11 minutes and 14 minutes. They just all end so quickly because he's able to eke out advantages very early on in the game. And because of that, his games just go so quickly. But now we begin to see that transition. He's starting to add in a couple of villages here over to wood. So he's kept seven on food this entire time. We can see he's thrown another one out on over onto the berries. And this is because as soon as he ages up, which by the way, very early age up time, you can see right here, four minutes, 15, he wants to queue a horseman and gets it immediately in queue. So really nice timing here. 
Got, got the uh, Lumber Camp coming up and now going back out over to Gold. So going to be looking at getting through uh, some of those early upgrades. Focusing. Normally we focus the Eco upgrades and then look to get in our military upgrades. But in this case, where you've, you're playing as the Byzantines, you can look to get Expilatories early. Definitely a wise choice. Second system now going to come down and he's going to connect it with the Aqueduct and the Horseman is straight out onto the map. Scout has dropped off the last of the sheep and he's going to be looking to put on the damage early. Keep in mind his opponent has only aged up. It's a bit of a late age up as well, which indicates probably Wheelbarrow, maybe a second town center. It could be the option. So we'll have to wait and see. But we've already spotted out. It, it's uh, it's actually because there's a dock in the middle. So that's uh, that's a little bit on me right there. Uh, it's it's hard to see when you've got this, uh, when he's picked blue, but it, but the uh, the water's there. So a pretty smart move from Vortex. I don't know if that was intentional, but it's, uh, you know, if, if you're not paying attention, definitely you will get it spotted out. But Villager now, Going to get caught out of position. And behind this, we do see that Silk Road mercenary contract is coming through. You can see the Longbows trying their best to block that horseman. The spearman comes out and that is going to force the horseman back. So that villager will have to go underneath the town center, probably onto a farm straight away, I suspect. You don't want to send that out too far. Scout took a little bit of damage there, but uh, he'll be fine. And now behind this, we already start to see those mercenaries coming through. He's got the Conscriptio on both of these um, on both of these production buildings, and he is just starting to pump out units at this stage. So just maintaining that Imperial Hippodrome, and we can see that he's working towards that 100 gold. So expect to see something like double Broadax picked up pretty soon at this point. Now, one other thing to note, which I'm not always a fan of, but he's quite heavy on berries in the early game here. Once you've got enough for your javelin throwers, I'm a really big fan of just getting off the berry straight away, just because they're so inefficient, right? Like you want your wheelbarrow with them. Ideally, you want to have horticulture as well, but he kind of sticks it. And I find that interesting. Now on this map in particular, there are a lot of berries. And I think that might be the reason why he's looked to play the Byzantines here. So if you're playing on this map, I've, I've actually got this map uh, turned down um, in my uh, in, in my map pool, or, or what's the word, banned, uh, downvoted. Uh, I think it's called Rocky River. Let's double check. Uh, yeah, Rocky River. Um, so with this map, obviously it's, uh, it is uh, a, a little bit of water, but they, ha they have kind of nerfed the water. So the water's not as potent as it once used to be. And we are now seeing players like, obviously he, he is, uh, he's playing and uh, he is a professional and he said, I'm not even going to bother taking the water. It's just not worth it for him. And you can see that there's only two fishing boat or fishing uh, spots in the pond. So realistically, it's not a big deal. And you can see that the, the last one is over here, a little bit, you know, 288. Uh, in the middle of the map, though, the Javelin Throwers are now out. He's going to begin forcing his opponent back across the map, getting that first longbow kill. And we're seven minutes into this game. Let's just pause the game quickly and just check in where Vortex is at, just to get a bit of an idea on what he's up to, okay? So Wheelbarrow is coming through. Looks like he hasn't picked up any of these eco upgrades or these key up eco upgrades just yet. He's just going with military at this early stage of the game. So he's pretty much playing like your... And, and I find that kind of interesting because the age up was so late. So I don't know exactly why was his late, age up so late uh, and yet he's only playing military with no eco upgrades. Oh, of the fishing boats. Of course, the fishing boats. Perhaps that was... Perhaps that's his downfall. I, I keep forgetting about the fishing boats because they, they're just kind of irrelevant at this stage. Uh, but um, yeah. So any, anyway, he's just focusing on military. No second TC. No looking at Castle Age just at the moment. How many vils has he got on gold? Two vils on gold. So not looking at Castle Age at all at this stage. Uh, so just going to start putting on the pressure. And that's what these javelin throwers allow you to do. By having these javelin throwers out on the map, you're going to start working on that longbow number. And that's what you want. Now, it, another argument that you could make in this situation as the javelin throwers once again connect with the longbows is that you could... You could go for longbows yourself in go instead of going for that mercenary house. Or sorry, instead of going for the javelin throwers at the mercenary house. Because the longbows are going to kill the enemy spearmen. And the horsemen are going to kill the uh, the longbows. But to me, I kind of see the javelin throwers as an insurance policy. These This is like a guarantee, right? You get these out early. If your enemy's got five longbows, then they're going to be able to counter your five longbows. But the reality is five longbows from the enemy is not going to be able to counter your four javelin. The javelin are way too strong in these numbers. And because of that... I think it's a really smart move by B to do this. So let's continue with the breakdown. He spots a couple more units here. And once again, he's going to be looking to try and get those Javelin in, looking to try and pick off those low health archers. And we'll do it. He's going to be careful not to lose his own Javelin throw. And look, look at the micro that comes out from B, bringing that low health Javelin thrower back. But he will eventually lose it. A little bit of missed micro there from him. And now going to have to fall back. Now, remember, he is on a secondary berry patch up towards the north side. It looks like we've got Wheelbarrow that has come through as well, which means he's now going to be able to turn over to Horticulture. And have a look how quickly this is moving. He's got it on Dialecticus at the moment. It's 20 seconds for that upgrade to come through. That is really, really quick. 
Uh, so he's having an absolute ball of a time over there, and that's going to help him out a huge amount uh, because now you're scaling two resources with that, and that's what's important to remember. So this this is a, a very powerful upgrade on a map like this, but, which, by the way, this is a, a really good map for the Byzantines. And have a look at this. We've got another mill coming out here. Plenty more berries where that came from. Really safe berries as well uh, up towards that top side. Remember, you're playing against the English in this matchup, so he, he's, he's, he's feeling pretty good about himself, right? Like, you're not up against cavalry. It's up against infantry, so you've got a fair bit of warning before they get up there, if they do ever get up there. You know, normally the English are following pretty much one channel through the middle of that map. But now I'm going to be adding in that next system. We do see that he has added the mining camp out over on this uh, this western side. And the blacksmith is thrown down. Now, one of the common things that we've seen with this system is it's staying on Dialecticus. He's making sure he's got that uh, that uh, increased uh, uh, research speed. Uh, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, it, it intersects both. That, that's quite a smart move by him to do this. So he intersects both uh, systems in the Hippodrome. So both of them are positioned so that they're both affecting it, which means that he gets Conscriptio. And he also gets Dialectica. So whether he goes into Expellatores, that's going to be boosted. Whether he goes into Horseman, that's going to be boosted as well. So very smart move by there. Uh, and now going to be bringing out another scout onto the map. That's going to be his second scout. He did also spot a scout moving up towards the top side here. So he's going to be looking to try and cut that off. There we go. But uh, very well played by Vortex. Uh, aware of that threat. Moves out of the way. More villagers once again moving out over onto the berries. I can only assume where, where are these guys going? They're going out to this berry bush now. So he's really looking to maintain control. He's doing a wonderful job of it, and he's going to scout out. He'll see his enemy, and he sees the villagers on gold. So this is a tell straight away, hey, I'm going to Castle Age. When you see that many villagers on gold, he knows, okay, I'm going to Castle Age. So at this stage, what does he do? Well, he needs to think about going Castle Age himself. That's going to be really important. We don't want to get stuck too far behind on our upgrades. But at the same time, we can still afford to get a couple of units out here, maybe focus on our economy a little bit more, maybe go up to that level four system. He's got the resources for it. Could probably even look to push to a level five, but he's going to keep those javelin throwers coming as well. So adding in more and more javelin throwers. Remember, the javelin throwers are incredibly good uh, in, in low numbers. Once they start getting to high numbers, it's a little bit harder. But we can still see he's got plenty of villagers here on berries. Not a whole lot of villagers on gold yet. So a little bit slow on that transition. Only rallying villagers out over onto gold rather than just, you know, shifting villagers out here. We see he's actually sending even more villagers out. What's he going for? He's going for assistant. So he's going to go for a level four assistant. We see that he's extending it out to the deer patch. And one of the things I would have liked to have seen was him extend the system up to these berries. But I guess that realistically, there's only five villagers up here. I mean, he's got plenty out here as well. I guess that's the other thing to note. I, I love the way that he's taking control of the map though. It, it's it's almost like you're playing uh, playing the Byzantines as the English. So he spots the age up. Not really able to do much much, much there. There was a lot of villagers building that uh, landmark. You can come in and try and snipe them out, but the, the longbows will be fine on the defensive. And the, the speed that that town center was coming up I don't think there was any real chance, but he's going to look to try and put pressure on. Remember that it's going to take a while for the upgrade to come through uh, for those longbows. Uh, we can quickly just check in and see Vortex doesn't actually have that upgrade coming through just yet. So he's going to look to try and play early on here. Has he picked up his upgrades? He's got ranged armor, which is exactly what he wants in this situation. You don't want to go for ranged attack, ranged armor on the javelin throwers. It's going to give them that extra little bit of break point. You can see he's got four armor compared to the English with six attack, which means only two damage done to each of these. That means you need 35 longbows to one shot a javelin thrower. And at the moment, Vortex is only sitting on 15. So he's not even going to be two shotting them. That is uh, that's kind of wild when you think about it. Veterancy now going to come through though for those longbows. Let's ride back on board with B. You can see he's immediately followed with the age up. And you can see the power of scouting here on the Byzantines, a civilization that really... It has a fair bit of agency. We can see that in his aggression. But at the same time, there's still a bit of reaction required. More javelin throwers now going to start coming out. He continues to move around the map here. Instead of sending the villagers all the way back to his base to go on gold, he's going to be bringing them across. And keep in mind, what, what's the timing here? He's moving these villagers to gold when? He's moving these villagers to gold when he's going to castle. And why is he doing that? Because when he gets to castle, he wants upgrades that's going to be the key that he's looking for here so expect to see upgrades coming through like the veterancy contract expect to see horsemen upgrades coming through as well but at this stage he's just going to be sticking it to the horsemen just to the javelin throwers nice and easy and look at these cheeky sneaky little villagers and now that push is coming to shove we can see the veterancy has arrived on those longbows I don't know whether we've got our blacksmith upgrades just yet, but I would expect that Vortex is probably looking at getting them in. Vortex with a nice little lead here. 500 point lead at the moment. He's going to have to fall back away from this. You can see that the uh, the javelin throwers work as pseudo archers as well in this situation. They can pick off the spearmen. 
Uh, you need quite a bit of them here because they do get bonus damage against ranged units, uh, and whereas the, the longbows get bonus damage against the spearmen. Uh, but uh, doing the right thing, backing on out of here. Keep in mind, these javelin throwers are faster than the longbows, so they can outrun them here. Can get some nice little micro in. And look at that damage coming in. Beautiful damage coming through. They're almost able to one-shot, but most of the spears getting taken out. And you can see he, he's able to clean out the spears just with the javelin throwers. Able to use the javelin throwers as archers. And now that push that was coming through from Vortex going to get annihilated here. The Fortitude gets popped. The ho horsemen have received their upgrade. Have a look at that. I didn't even realize we got the horsemen upgraded already. Veterancy on the javelin throwers immediately. B is just so on top of this. Uh, and, you know, what was why was Vortex pushing? I'm sure a lot of people might be saying, you know, Vortex was pushing and he had no units. He didn't have any units, but he did have the veterancy on, the, on those units, which gives them a little bit more potency. And he's waiting for things like these men-at-arms, which are going to trickle through. And he thought he was going to be able to hold it because of his veteran status. The reality was that his opponent aged up so quickly, got that veterancy as well, and was able to overwhelm him. And that's what makes this so smart, because he utilizes that bonus coming out from the system. It's on, on uh, Conscriptio now, but it was on Dialecticus. We know that because it came through so damn quickly. And now able to chase away the English player. There's a part of me that's really starting to think this matchup may be very hard for the English. This could be their impossible matchup. You know, uh, when, when we think about, you know, matchups that the English are good into, they're good against the Chinese, they're good against Juicy Legacy, um, particularly against Juicy Legacy because they don't have any archers. But here, I mean, this is really tough. There's so much mobility coming out uh, from B here on the Byzantines. The fact that he's got the javelin throwers together with the horsemen make it really, really nice. Now, underneath the town center here, Horseman, it's only got the one ranged armor at the moment, but the Javelin Throwers, they'll be able to get underneath, and you can see he's still got five ranged armor up against the eight damage of those of those uh, archers. So at, at this stage of the game, he's done a really good job of just keeping his opponent down, taking out the majority of the army. The main thing is driving that longbow number down. You want to keep that longbow number down. As long as the longbow number stays down, then the Javelins are going to be effective. That's going to be the key here. And now we start to see Cataphracts building up of all the units. What's going to be Cataphracts that are coming online. He's picked up those teardrop shields. A little bit of extra, a uh, little bit of extra armor on him and uh, able to finish off the majority of those longbows. And now once the Cataphracts get in underneath the town center, that's pretty much going to be it. If we take a look back towards the base, Men at Arms are trying to make their way in, trying to do a little bit of harassment here. Level 5 Sistan has come online. He's dropping the Monastery to pick up those relics. And towards that top side of the map, he is still just happily camping this up. Bit of a wallalo on that south side of the map. But of course, B just going to quickly run away. And that is going to be it. So that's it. Nice and simple. Super easy game. Let's um let's see if we can just pause it just here and just, uh, just talk a little bit about it and, and what made this a really special game, in my opinion, for Byzantine players. Number one, Byzantines as a civilization, many people considered it to be a write-off at the competitive level. Uh, it got the buff. People realized, okay, maybe it's actually pretty decent. And we saw Vortex suffer in this game up against B. Uh, can I? Yeah, I can change. Okay, cool. I can get that off my screen. So overall, like if, if we look at what he did, he followed a pretty simple plan. The idea is that he wants to fight early. The idea is that he wants to get Castle Age after his opponent has gotten Castle Age. And he's kind of almost looking for permission, right? Like it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you're going Castle? Okay, I can go Castle. The same sort of thing that you see in, uh, you know, as the Chinese. The Chinese are, are very much like that. It's, it's it, You're always asking for permission from the enemy ship. And once you've got it, then you're able to go up. And he utilized it really well here. Very impressive. I think one of the ways that he could have looked to improve on this even more there's an opening here where he could have gone for the system of the first hill. The system of the first hill would have been impressive because in this situation, you've got cataphracts out and cataphracts excel when it comes to the system of the first hill. They are essentially going from 360 HP to 600 HP. So that's one of the ways that he could improve on it. But overall, it, it's a very small variance. And I, I will just remark on the fact that he's out here on the map. I don't think you're going to be able to do this against all civilizations. You're not going to be able to do this against the French. You're not going to be able to do this against, uh, you know, JD at all. Uh, but uh, one of the things to note is you can always throw down that outpost, right? Like keep them in groups of five the exact way that he's done it here. Five villages down on the berries, throw down that outpost. Uh, and then, you know, towards this top side, five villages, throw down the outpost. I mean, here, here you're kind of safe, right? Because you're up against the edge of the map. It's pretty far away. Whereas here, you can definitely throw down that outpost. I mean, realistically, you could probably even chuck in some walls at the front here. But for the most part, very clean, solid game from B. So well played to him. Once again, make sure you go check out EGC TV this weekend. 15 GMT, Saturday, Sunday. They'll be streaming the EGC finals both days. So go check them out. Go say good day. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. Thank you guys for watching.